First up, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bob Shem, Yahweh Shai, Bob Shem, Akash Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom, warm salutations to the hopeful elect that's fighting the good fight of faith. And truth and sincerity and wholeheartedly. Shalom, warm to the aqua, which is the women believers. Shalom, warm to you. They out here once a day. You know, at least the weather is decent. And guess what? No matter how good the weather is, prophecy still coming to pass. Bad times are still about to come. And while people are eating, drinking, and being merry, the Lord is doing things, you know? And a lot of people gonna get caught up in it. So the first scripture I wanna start off with is um, Jeremiah 21 and eight. <laughs> it said, unto this people, talk about the Israelites, you shall say, thus saith Yahweh, behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. All right, so that shows you that the Lord controls both sides. But you can't say that you ain't here the way of life. Man, this word have reached to the UK, Germany, Australia. You got camps all over the world. All right, and I always say this, you got uh, camps in major city in Babylon the Great. All right, in every major city in Babylon the Great, AKA America, you got a camp out there. So if you walked past, looked at the sign, did, didn't inquire, all right, and even if you, and then you have a whole bunch of um, knockoff camps. You got camps everywhere. So it's no excuse not to know who you are. And after you find out who you are, it's up to you to do the business of finding out more about it. All right, so that's why the Lord said, you're gonna be marked, man. In Romans 1, it said, you're without excuse. This word has been out. And the Lord also has set the way of life and the way of death, all right? So that's what you gotta understand. So, at the end of the day, I don't know what the Edomite was talking about, but at the end of the day, man, it's all about coming out here, repent for the kingdom of heaven is out here. That's what Yahweh Shah said, all right? And the thing is, the, king, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand because this is what's going to usher in the kingdom, the prophecies, the bad time. It's about to get bad out here. A lot of people are going to find out the hard way. When, when I come out here, you got to understand, I'm on an island by myself, so it's thousands of people. They look at me like I'm crazy, but they don't understand. I'm looking at you like you crazy, all right? Because you don't understand what's about to come upon the earth. So the Lord said in Matthew 24 and 12, since iniquity shall abound, that is to be without God's laws, all right? That means that wickedness is spreading abroad at an all-time rate. Since iniquity shall abound, which is sin, all right? The love of many shall wax cold. We already in that time, but it's going to get worse because when it's a famine, when it's um, lawlessness, when it ain't no police, when it's just everybody for themselves, as the scripture says, friends going to fight each other like enemies in that day. When it's limited resources, it's automatic chaos. And people are going to find out that, damn, I've been lied to my whole life. Because you trust in the shadow of Egypt, all right? You trust in this place. That's why you still go vote. That's why you still go to the, uh, you still want to march. You still want to ask the government to give you a fair shake. That is not in its best interest. Every kingdom needs servants. We are the biggest service. We are the biggest consumer, all right? And also, we've been exploited and extorted. We got extorted, we got brought over here in slavery by force. And we've been extorted ever since we so-called been out of uh, slavery, of exploited, I mean. All right, so since we are the salt of the earth, we got the most salt on the earth. We're the most talented people on the earth because we are Yasharala. So the Esau Edom, he exploit that talent. He'll give you crumbs just as long as you don't come back to your power. So our people are trusting no oppression, as the scripture says. All right, because if you understood the status that you should be and where you should be, on a totem pole, you will look at this like, I don't want this. Because at the end of the day, you can hit the lotto for a billion dollars, and guess what, you don't own nothing. And then he got the he got the hedge on everything. All you want to do is give him his money back. Do you understand that that paper currency that's in his pocket, that's in your pocket, that is his money, all right? That's not real money. That's why you don't have the access just to buy land like that. You don't have, that's real wealth right there. 
But see, our people, they love the paper cash. They want to get it. They want to slide it down their arm. They want to put it up to their, um, to their head like a phone, you know? Not even understanding that it's literally nothing but a piece of paper. And Esau Edom about to show you. He about to show you that it's nothing but a piece of paper because everything about to go digital and then what? And that's what's going to cause the uprising of the people, the sedition. Your whole life, you've been chasing after the bag. And now that bag, that illusionary of a bag that you was chasing, it's going to be done with. You're going to go to your bank account but like, what, what the hell going on? I know I had money. I just got paid yesterday. All right? So since iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, man. All right? And so let's read the famous scripture because this is what's coming to the earth. Whether you like it or not, though, that's a thing. This thing, this truth is not about emotions. It's about what is. You being mad ain't going to change nothing. You being sad ain't gonna change nothing. Prophecies is inevitable. We have received the curses. We are still under the curses, but we're headed into the blessing. So while the world is gonna be mourning, the men of the Lord and the women that believe is going to be rejoicing. Because we understand that that have to happen before so-called prosperity to happen, so-called justice to happen. All right, these things have to happen. So ba very bad times have to happen first before the kingdom of heaven comes. And the Lord said when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Ain't nobody rejoicing out here. You have a false illusion of rejoicing. But until you can eat real food and, and breathe in clean air and have a woman in order, you're not in no prosperity. And that's the little things. All right? Because guess what? If this earth was actually ran under God's laws, it would be out harmony. Because when you go into the law, it, most of the law is going into how you treat one another. And in, in this world, you treat each other like a piece of shit. All right? So, so Matthew 24, 21, it said, For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no no nor ever shall be that's what you got to understand that's how you know it's going to be bad but the lord says it's going to get so bad but it's never going to be like that again that's just scary this is the last time that the lord is going to have to show his power in this way he did it back in egypt but he gonna make egypt look like a Basically, like, like it ain't even happened. That's why the Lord said in Jeremiah 16, it said, no more should they say that deliver the children out of Egypt, but deliver the children from the north. So this deliverance and this power is going to be a hundred times way stronger, more marvelous, more magnificent, whatever adjective you want to put on it compared to the ancient time. All right? So, verse 22 and except those days should be shortened, should no flesh be saved. And guess what? The fools that you eat, the air that you breathe, the water that you drink is killing you. All right? And then you're dealing with the devil who wants to kill you. He says if he can find a right uh, jump shot, that he could depopulate. He said that in the TED Talk in 2009, I want to say. You know, uh, BG, you know who that is, BG. Billy, Billy boy, he said, hey, we got to get one of these numbers closer to zero. And the people was the ones he had to get close to zero. Because it's easier to, it's easier to, you know, control less people than 8.6 billion people that's on the earth. All right? So a lot of people have died since the pandemic. And more people will continue to die because guess what? They talking about more jump shots in the fall. They already got it. All right, they already got it on deck. So guess what? The, and then they're gonna, then they're actually going to make these jump shots mandatory. Then what? You already failed the first test. A lot of people took the serpent juice because they were scared about losing their job. But what about Sweet Jesus? Y'all believe in Sweet Jesus so much? He was supposed to provide for you. But now, if they make it mandatory, you definitely gonna fail. Even the ones who said. Oh Lord, forgive me for doing what I did. You are gonna take it anyway, cause you failed the first test. The, the, the last test is gonna be the worst. So, 
you got to understand that we are heading into a time where the Lord is about to allow his sword to come down with great wrath. Revelation 12 and 12, he's going to come down with great wrath because he know we have but a short time. We are in that short time. See, the leaders of this world, they understand what time we're in. They understand who they are. They understand who we is. All right? So they know that their kingdom is limited. Their kingdom is on borrowed time right now. NATO is de uh, dissembling right before our eyes. The nations is coming against America right before our eyes. They're trying to, you know, do backyard deals with, within each other <clears throat> to get away from the dollar. Now, I believe that they are doing this on purpose because guess what? Why all these nations trying to have a digital currency too? If you're trying to separate so much, then why are you trying to do the same? Thing? <clears throat> why are you trying to do the same thing that Esau Eden doing? So that's why I believe that they are, you know, together. But the Lord said that they're going to vex them. Matter of fact, let's get there real quick. The Lord said that He, He control of the kings of the heart and move it whithersoever He please. So right now they could be together when it comes to the financial. But everything else, they're going to be separated. Because you got Esau, Edom, who is the devil, the self self-proclaimed white people since 1681. All right, the devil that the Bible speaks of. All right, and also, for all you um, Edomites that's walking up and down the street, it's not a color thing. You could possibly be an Israelite because it's not a skin color thing. But for the true Edomites, you're going into captivity. Everything that you've done to us is going to happen to you even worse. We ain't gonna do no wickedness to you like rape you and things like that, like you did unto us. But we dealing with the king of terrors here. He gonna, he gonna have some things in store. My puny little mind could think of some things. So how much the Lord, he's gonna change us and put his mind in us. He said he gonna put his anger in us, all right? So anyway, so going back to, they might all agree right now on the financial tip, because they're trying to separate from the dollar. So, but everybody trying to go digital though. But the Lord controlled the kings of the heart. So let's read this. This is what's going to happen. We don't know what exactly is what's going to happen that's going to cause this, but the Lord said it's going to happen. All right, and it says, Habakkuk 2 and, uh, 2 and 7, shall they, that's the nations, not rise up suddenly. That shall bite you in a wake that shall vex you. So it says suddenly, so it's going to be out of nowhere. So right now, they might agree, but the Lord's going to put a spirit on them to fulfill his heart. That said, that, actually, that's the scripture in Revelation 17 and 16. He said he's going to put it in their heart to fulfill his will. So suddenly, all right, the Lord going to do something. He's going to shake up. And it says, awake shall bless you and you shall be booties unto them, which means you're going to be destroyed. All right? You're going to be destroyed. They're going to destroy you. They're going to come together and have something to go. Like, you got to understand. So the nations understood this. Esau is the man. I'm going to come under him. I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to put my trust in him. I'm going to follow whatever he say. Because as the scripture says in Revelation 17, it said that they lived deliciously off the whore. All right? So Esau told the nations, like, hey, if you come follow me, you're going to live prosperously. That's why when you go to Psalms 83, because at the end of the day, it's all about keeping us down. See, the nations are in agreement when it comes to keeping the Israelites down. All right, because guess what? They know that when the Israelites are on top, they can't live after the desires of their heart. They don't have a kingdom. Even though they don't have understanding, the scriptures literally says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. See, they don't understand that. They look at us like the so-called black, disgruntled so-called black man, woman, Latino, Native American, man and woman. They look at us like we have a problem, like we are the problem on the earth. But we don't have no power to change the gas prices, the food prices. We don't got no airplanes that go back and forth and drop chemtrails. We ain't. We don't have the power to start war. We start war with each other. We are a detriment to each other, not to the world. Esau is a detriment to the world. All right. So the Lord is going to cause these nations to come together with one consent to destroy Esau, Edom, man. And it says, because, this is why, because you have spoiled many nations. So ever since Esau, Edom been in the power, they have went through every nation and colonized it, 
all right? They went through every nation and stole their goods. They gave them false, um, matter of fact, uh, confessions of an economic hitman, all right? Confessions of an economic hitman. He goes in. What they'll do, first of all, they will cause the nations to get poor, then they will give them a loan that they can't pay, and then when they can't pay it, they steal their resources. And then if a leader get out of line, they kill him and put a puppet leader, and guess what? Now that whole nation is controlled under the wine of Babylon the Great, all right? So that's what happens. So you gotta understand that this man, ever since he been in power, all he did was spoil nations. So it says, because you have spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil you, all right? Because of man's blood and the violence of the land of the city and all that dwell therein. Everywhere you go, when you go up, three scriptures up, Habakkuk 2 and 5, it said he is as death and as hell. Everywhere he go, hell and death follow him, all right? Hell and death follow him. He said he is death and hell. That's why when you go to Revelation 22 and 14, it said death and hell should be cast into the lake of fire, which is this system and the people that run this system, all right? We are in, we, we walk through the valley of shadow of death, but we will fear no evil because we got the truth. We got Yahweh Bashem and Yahweh Shai, man. So, while you, I'm talking about the people of the earth, the Israelites, uh, particularly, but guess what, all the nations, because guess what? All the nations is going to receive mercy except for the so-called white men. All right? All the nations is going to receive mercy except for the so-called white men. So guess what? When the kingdom get established, after y'all get y'all backs whipped, hung from trees, all right? Get oppressed for the thousand years of us building up the kingdom. Well, you're going to be building up the kingdom. But the point is that after that thousand years, the nation is going to be able to rejoice. As it says in Proverbs 29 and 2. Esau, Edom is going to be done away with. They're going to be gathered up and burnt. As it said, Obadiah 1 and 18. So, while everybody, but particularly the um, Israelites, because the scriptures call it Jacob's trouble. Which is the world's trouble. Because Jacob is scattered everywhere. Alright, you got Jake in the country. Jake in the suburbs. Jake in Sweden. Alright, first of all, that's... Actually, we was all up through Europe before we came into captivity. So anyways, so Ezekiel 21 and eight. So while the whole world is eating, drinking and being merry, talking about what they gonna do uh, later this summer, talking about I'm gonna get married in 2025, talking about I can't wait till my kids walk across the stage. I can't wait to clap for my baby, all right? This is what the Lord is saying right now, but this is the time that we in. He about to allow the devil to come down with great wrath. King David said it best, Psalm 17 and 13, deliver me from the wicked, which is thy sword. The Lord used the sword, man. So it says, Ezekiel 21 and 8, and the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith Yahweh, a say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also fervent. All right? So the sword is being sharpened right now. It's looking all shiny. It's waiting to come across Yo, ass. All right? This is not a game. I might be joking a little bit, a little laughy, ha, ha, he, but no, it ain't funny. All right? The Lord is about to allow this devil to have his heart desire as in destroying his heritage. When it said that he wanted to maintain a population under 500 million, that's pretty much every Israelite. Israelites is the sand of the sea. Majority of the 8.6 billion is Israelites. So to go down 500 million, which I would probably say would, that's like 75% of the population got to be gone. So a lot of killing going to happen. Even when you read the second address, which I'm going to get, it talks about dead bodies everywhere. Nobody going to be able to, uh, matter of fact, I ain't even going to talk about it. I'm going to get it. All right, so anyways, so a son of man prophesied, say, thus say, if Yahweh say a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. 
See, when you read things like this, it's supposed to be like, what you talking about? What you mean a sore slaughter? Can you can you comprehend this for me? Can you make can you make me understand this? But no, what people do, they scoff. And the scripture says, in the last days shall call shall, uh, shall come scoffers walking after their own lust. So everything that the word said is happening. Everything that the word said is happening, and that's why you have men out here who make your body a living sacrifice for two reasons. Number one, the Lord put the spirit on that man to do it. Number two, we see it because he said, bless your eyes for they see, bless your ears for they hear. So when we see this, all right, we like, wow. We marvel at the, uh, at the work of the Lord while the people are blinded. So they ain't looking. There's another Edomite that's going to die. But like I said, so they ain't, they, they ain't looking. They ain't looking. They don't got the eyes to see they too busy scrolling on Facebook and Instagram. They don't know what the hell's going on in the world. All right? And that's the majority of the people. They did that on purpose. Give these people bread and circuses for they can never see what we really up to. So that's why you got sports. Why you think sports was still running in the pandemic? But it's supposed to be so dangerous. You have 60,000 fans in the, in the stadium sitting next to each other in the midst of the pandemic but you got people talking about they scared everybody should have dropped dead all right everybody should have been sick but i digress it said it is sharpened to make a sore slaughter it is furbished that it may glitter should we then make mirth mirth is in a state of joy turning up being happy doing whatever comes to your mind. That's what Murph is, all right? Should we then make Murph? Understand what time we in. Ecclesiastes 3 talks about the time for peace and the time for war, time for love, time for hate. You find out what time we are in. The prophet's telling you what time we are in, but you don't know. Because you think, because I'm able to take off the mask and the mandates of the jump shots are over with, even though they're coming back in the fall, you think that, oh, we, we back to normal. But ever since the pandemic, rent went up, gas went up, food went up, cost of living went up, all right? And it's gonna continue to go up to a price you out. Because right now we in something called shrinkflation, which means it's less goods. When things are less, they become more valuable. You're gonna have to spend more, all right? There's a lot of ways that, that Esau Edom can bring the people down to their knees. I believe it's going to be an EMP because everything is controlled on the electronic grid. If you if you do an EMP, that means no goods coming into the store, no ships coming across the ocean because you need diesel. If you if only thing that's going to be able to run is you know the automobiles, but you need gas. The gas pumps ain't going to work, which reminds me of men should desire to go into a city should not be able. So you got to understand. All right, you got to understand that the earth that we're about, well, not the earth, the time on the earth that we're about to head into, it's going to be a very bad time. We read about it every week, but since we read about it every week, it gets desensitized. But that's on you. You're going to find out the hard way. All right, you're going to find out the hard way. That life that you thought was life is not all it's cracked up to be. You're dealing with a tyrant government, and as the scripture says, he came as a lamb, but now he's going to speak as a uh, dragon. Revelation 13 and 11. All right? We are heading into the draconian laws. They already started on a little level back with the mandates of the jump shots. All right? So, it says, Should we then make mirth, it contemneth the rod of my son. They don't care about Yahweh Shai and his power structure. They don't care about the Israelites. All right, we are the rod of his inheritance. The rod represents rulership. Contemnath mean they mock at it. They make light of it. All right, they scorn at it. So they contemnath the rod of my son. For them to even gonna do what they gonna do, they ain't worried about Israelites being in their power and Yahweh Shai coming to destroy them. They gonna do what they gonna do even though they control. The Lord is just sealing their faith. Soon as they bring forth the karagma, soon as they start touching the apple of the Lord's eye, that's when Yahweh Shai gonna come. But also, remember, 
Jacob's trouble is the Lord's punishment upon his own people because they got to go. Two thirds got to go. The Lord gave us provision in the time of Jacob's trouble. He said, my servant shall eat, my servant shall drink. But you shall vex, all right? And howl for vexation of spirit. A lot of people is going to starve in these days to come, all right? All it takes for a shipment to stop. Because they say that it's only three days worth of food. If all the semi trucks stop, the ship stop, guess what? You're going to starve. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and and it said, and he, Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah Barak and Thai, that woman. Yahweh Bashi and Yahweh Shah Barak and Thai, that woman. You don't know what I'm talking about. So that's the spirit. Hopefully, it should be delivered. But, um, and it said, and he have given it to be furbish. All right? And he have given it to be furbish. So the Lord, he put the sword in Esau's hand and he made it sharp. Remember, the blessing of Esau is the sword. He said he's going to live by the sword. He's going to have the fatness of the earth. That's how he got it. Dropping bombs and starting wars and winning the wars. And even when he lost a war, he still ain't lose his power. That's how you know the Lord is with him. All right? They lost the Vietnam War, but they ain't lose no power. So um, it said, he have given it to be furbished that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened and it is furbished. It give it to the hand of the slayer. Who is the hand of the slayer? The wicked, his blessed. Revelation 6 and 4, a, a red horse, it was given to him a great sword to take peace from the earth. And ever since he came into power, this world have not been peaceful. Isaiah 48 and 22, it said, Dove said the Lord, there is no peace unto the wicked. There is no peace unto the wicked. How can you be wicked and have peace? That's oil and water. That don't, come on now. They ain't looking to be peaceful. They looking to take everything. And they already doing it. They already got the resources re uh, heaped up to themselves. All right, they all ready to have all the gold. They already got all the land. They've been buying up land this whole time since the pandemic. They even been polluting the land. It's a law, it's a law on the books that if the land is polluted, the government can buy it. Why do you think all those train derailments happen? They really, they going through with their blessing. They trying to cause 15 minute cities. They're literally trying to keep them. Second address 15 and 17, a man should desire to go into the city, should not be able. That's martial law and all of that. Then the scriptures above that, sedition among men. Cause what's gonna happen is the people who have a brain it's going to be like, wait a minute, this is some, un this is some bullshit. We got to take marriage into our own hands. They took our money. they taken away our rights. You know them Edomites? The Edomites are like, hell no, nah, America, this is our place. All right? So guess what? They're going to fight for their land, even though it's not, it's not their land. It's the Israelites' land. But they took it. They own it now. So they feel like it's theirs. So they're going to fight for it. That's of Isaiah 19 and 2. Egyptian against the Egyptian. All right, the modern day Egyptians is Esau. Cause guess what? He took all the gods, cause all the gods stemmed from Babylon. That was the first civilization with Nimrod. All right? And then guess what? The Egyptians, they all Hamites. The Egyptians took the gods of the Babylonians. The Greeks took the uh, gods of Egypt and the Romans took the gods of Egypt. But they all go back to Babylon. That's why this place is called Babylon the Great. And also in Revelation 11 and 8, it said this place is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. All right? So Esau, Edom, he about to drop the, the tomahawk on these people right here. Jake is going to find out the hard way. You don't want to repent. You don't want to come back to your power. Hey, there's nothing else that the Lord can do. He wiped his hands. He sent his prophets out there. You misuse his prophets. You talk shit against them. Because the scripture says not many noble, not many uh, mighty are called. See, the men of the Lord don't have wealth and influence like the celebrities. But that's why the Lord didn't want it, because he wants you to be sincere. So like I said, if, if, LeBron, if I was LeBron James right now with a garment, this whole downtown would be right here listening to me. And we all know that you won't be listening to the word, you'll be listening to LeBron James. But I can honestly say, you hate the word so much, you might come because of LeBron James. As soon as you start speaking the truth, 
people might start, you know, walking away a little bit, little by little. So it said he is giving it to the hands of the slayer, prowl and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people, Jacob's trouble. But that, what does it say at the end of that scripture? But he shall be saved out of it. He is the elect. But, so, the sword is going into the hand of the slayer, and it's going to be upon my people. And it says, it shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite upon the thigh. That's why sometimes when you see the prophets, we get into it because it's the spirit. Sometimes we be like this, man. Wake up. Wake up. If it's meant for you to wake up, this is not a game out here. See, Mike Tyson is one of my favorite uh, statements that he made. Everybody got a plan so they get punched in the mouth. That's what the prophecy is going to do. The prophecies is going to punch people in the mouth. And guess what? You ain't going to have your guard up. The Lord talks about wanting to you to have a covering, but not by my spirit. All right? That you may add sin to sin. Because it's easy to walk through the broad. It's hard to go through the straight, which leadeth unto life. All right? So it says, because it is a trial, what is a trial? A test. And also, when you in a trial, it's a judgment at the end of that. It's either you're going to be guilty or innocent. And in this case, you're guilty. So, because it is a trial, and what if the sword contemneth even the rod shall be no more, saith the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh man. So, as time continues to keep going on, guess what? Now, let's read what's about to come to the earth. Isaiah 24. So it says, Isaiah 24, 1, Behold, Yahweh make up the earth empty, and make it be waste, turn it upside down. So when the Lord said that he's turning it upside down, that's he mingled a perverse spirit in the midst of us. He caused Egypt to earth. All right? So how did the Lord turn this place around? Look at it. Revelation 11 and 8, this is the place where our Lord was crucified. The way that he looked was X'd out, his ways is X'd out. Since iniquity shall abound, the, the love of many shall wax cold. So the Lord had mingled a perverse spirit, which means to be upside down and also to be wickedness. That's why you got men trying to be women, women trying to be men, people cutting up, men cutting off their rod, women trying to grow a rod. All right? You got alphabet people, the rainbow people, you know what I'm talking about. They the leaders of the world. They got more rights than anybody. And if you say something against them, now you are a terrorist. All right, they're trying to rewrite the Bible, so it's getting bad out here. But he said he make it be empty. When you go into that word empty, one of the definitions is to annihilate. Because the devil will come down with great wrath. All right? And it said, and scattered abroad the inhabitants thereof. So going into 2nd Andrew 16, it said that it's going to be 10 people left in the city. Do you understand that most cities have hundreds of thousands of people? The Lord says there's only going to be 10 left. That's how much the Lord's going to allow the devil to come down with great wrath. So while you think that this, this is a joke, you're going to find out the horrible. So it says, and it shall be with the people, so with the priest. So it said with the people, right? That's everybody. Everybody is going to go through this. But Jacob is just the focal point of it. But everybody's going to go through this. All right? So it says... So with the people, so with the priests, that's you false prophets out there. As with the servants, so with the master. So with the maid, so with the mistress. So with the buyer, so with the seller. So with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. All right? So everybody going to get it. Everybody going to get it. If you are not under the covering of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh you're going to get it. All right? And it said, the land shall be utterly empty, utterly spoiled, for Yahweh have spoken his word. So, when the UN peacekeepers come over here, they already got uh, Russian soldiers and China soldiers going through the southern border. A whole bunch of people from the um, islands came over here that's uh, military age. 
So you gotta, you gotta remember these things. So much stuff coming to pass that you can forget. All right. So you have foreign troops on American soil, ready to get that call. Because the devil coming down with great wrath, it's not just Esau Edom himself. It's his army, the United Nations, but they call it the UN peacekeepers. There's 24 nations under that. All right? China been here. They waiting. All right? They got stations over here. They don't got no ties to nobody over here. When it comes down to mowing you down like a piece of shit, as the scripture says, you're going to be laying like dumb in the street. They ain't going to shed a tear and they ain't going to think twice. You ain't their family. And the nations hate you, Jacob. You go, where are you going to find out? So it says, the earth mourned and faded away, the world language and faded away, the hardy people of the earth do language. Because why? The decrees, the unrighteous decrees that's about to be, that's about to happen, which is already happening, but it's going to even get worse. That's the draconian laws. So to be, language is to be without hope. All right? So that's how bad it's going to be. People are going to be like, I don't know what to do. Why is this happening? You shouldn't listen to the prophets, Israelites. But now, this is going, as the scripture talks about, this ain't going to come upon us unaware. This is going to come upon you unaware. Because we ain't sleep as others. The scripture says, now it's high time to wake out of sleep. Romans 13 and 11. But see, you still in a sleep state. The uh, Proverbs 21 and 16. He that wandereth out the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead which is another example of being asleep. You might be breathing, you might be eating, walking up and down the street, but guess what? You're dead. Because the scripture said that the word quickeneth, which means make us alive. So you're not made alive, you're dead right now. All right? Especially if you're a scoffer. Judgment, scripture said that uh, uh, the stripes are made for the back of fools. And judgment to scorners, Proverbs 19 and 29. Right? So, it says, the people of the earth do language, the hottie people, all you proud people out there, because guess what, as soon as you can't put a sandwich in your mouth and drink some juice, all right, that's when you're going to realize how insignificant you are. That's when you're going to realize that there's a God, because most people are going to be calling us, especially the Israelites, because we're a natural or spiritual people. Scripture said that you shall seek me early, but you shall not find me. Soon as adversity come, you're going to want to call on the Lord, but the Lord already turned his back. The Lord already turned his back. He did it before. That's why we went into captivity, and Esau, Edom, had his way with us. So Esau, Edom, will have his way with us again. It's nothing new under the sun. It's just going to be worse this time. So it says, the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Going back, says says iniquity shall abound, the love of me shall wax cold. All right, they don't live after the law of the Lord. They live after the law of the land. And the law of the land is the unrighteous decrees. They also, all you seeing is wickedness spreading. A kingdom cannot run when you got the alphabet people running things. All right? See, you have, you have archaeologists who went over to Solomon and Gomorrah, and they're like, oh, shit, this is real. So the same thing that happened to Solomon and Gomorrah is going to happen to this place. All right? So it says, therefore, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant, talking about the word, they don't keep the word, therefore have the curse devoured the earth. What do it say? In Isaiah 34, 5, my, uh, my, my sword is bathed in heaven, it shall come upon Idumia, which is a Latin way of saying Edom, upon the people of my curse. All right? So Esau, Edom, separate plain white people, they are the people of the Lord's curse. All right? So guess what? They the one of uh, Job 9 and 24. The earth was given into the hands of the wicked. Look what they done with it. Revelation 11 and 18. Destroy them which destroy the earth. They don't keep the land Sabbath. All right? They don't keep no laws. No laws. All right? This is a lawless place. The scripture says, all them that hate me love death. So all you people out there, by default, you got a death with So it says, Therefore have the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt, and a few men left. Because you already know, first of all, it's going to be fires everywhere. Every time that is a big riot, 
you got fire everywhere. All right? The few men that's going to be left is the ones that's going to be burning in the fire. Remember, the Lord said in uh, Revelation 19 that uh, the remnant, but let me see if I can find that real quick. I'm going to try Revelation 9 first. No. Well, yeah, actually. So Revelation 9 and 17. It said, And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and in them that sat in them having a blessed place of fire and of Jason and of brimstone. So Apostle John is doing his best to explain what the missiles look like. He only can compare to what he knows. He's looking into the future. It was no, it wasn't no such thing called missiles. All right, so he's trying to compare the vision to what he knows. So it says, and the head of the horses, which is the warheads, were as the heads of lions, and but that's because. Hey, 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 hey. And it says, as the head of lions, because when the warhead dispersed. The fire goes out, so it looked like a mane of a lion, which is a big beard, all right? And it says, their mouths issue fire and brimstone. By these was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which is issued out of their mouths. So that is the missiles coming down, all right? So when you go back to Isaiah, it said that if the earth will be burnt and a few men left, that's the remnant. It said a third of the people are gonna die. Because you gotta understand that I think Babylon the Great only had 5% of the population. So you might think that Babylon the Great is like so big, but it's not. All right, it's only 5%. It's 350 million people out of 800, out of 8.6 billion people. All right, so it's only 5%. So the remnant, which is everybody that's going to be over here, all right, you going to get it. And it says, the new wine morning. Now we talking. This is the new system that's the Lord. That, uh, well, yeah, it is the Lord. Because the scripture says it's not in men to direct his own steps. So it is the Lord. But see, that new wine is the new system that Esau Edom is going to implement. Which is programmable money. Which means if it's programmable, that means it's tracked and traced. That means that it can be programmed that you only can buy from this section, but you can't buy from that section. Also, it's tied to a social credit system. So now you got no way in hell to have your own mind, to speak against the government. That's the new wine. That's the earth that you want to live on. This is the power structure that you want to abide by. Be my guest. Now the Lord ain't going to allow him to fully set up his new NWO because when you go to Job 20 and 22, it said in the fullness of the sufficiency, he should be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall be upon him. All right? So he's gonna have a hard way, but the Lord, when he come back, that's the cherry on top. And it said it should rain on him while he is eating. What's gonna rain on him? The nuclear warheads. Babylon the Great, because this is where the place that the wine spread into the four corners of the earth. This is the headquarters of the NWO. But when you destroy the headquarters, everything else falls. You destroy the head, everything else falls. So Babylon the Great is gonna be destroyed, AKA America. This place will go out just like Solomon and Gomorrah, all right? And if you don't know what Solomon and Gomorrah is, look it up. So this place will go out the same way. And so I said the new wine worn of divine languages, all the merry hearted do side. People are merry heart right now. It's a nice day out here. People going to the shopping malls. They talk about what they are gonna get into later, you know? You already know, like I said earlier, people planning for the future. Well, the future is going to be very dark. The Lord said the day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So it's going to be very dark out here. Each day that we get closer, it's going to get dark out here. All right? So, at the end of the day, the system that we're about to head into, oh, you're going to wish that you was going to die. You, you're going to wish for death because you ain't going to be able to live. You're not going to be able to live. You ain't going to be able to do what you want no more. Now, of course, when it comes to wickedness, hey, Esau's all for that. Do whatever your heart desires. But I'm talking about moving to and fro. 
buying this and buying how much I want to buy because I got the money. Ain't, ain't none of that happening no more. Uh, Agenda 2030, he literally said you should own nothing and be happy. And then, and that, and that is, that's funny to me because what he's really saying, he's really mocking you. How can you be happy and you don't, you don't have control over nothing? But he's saying that it's going to be so bad that you're going to bow down to whatever he bring forth. You should own nothing and be happy. So that's the earth, or that's the time on the earth that we're headed into. When the Lord is going to allow Esau Edom to implement everything that his heart desires. All right? That's why I say that the pride of his heart have deceived him. Because see, the Lord allowed him to get away with a lot. But he don't understand, as it says in Job 14 and 5, he have bounds that he cannot pass. The number of the months are with me. All right? So the Lord controls his bounds. Everything that he's going to be able to do, the Lord will allow him to do it. Because guess what? The Lord is using Esau to come upon his people Israel. You don't want to believe? You want to trust in him? Well, the, the same people that you trust in is going to be your downfall. So it said Isaiah 24 and 8, the mirth of the tabernacle ceaseth, the noise of them that rejoice in this, the joy of their heart ceaseth. So right now, imagine in that time, you ain't gonna be talking about put on that R. Kelly, put on that Lil Wayne, put on that little baby. All right, in that time, you're gonna be trying to worry about how can I get a little bit extra food? All right, how can I, you know, get out of this situation? But see, the whole world, man, the whole world, that scripture says, the time of temptation that should come upon all the world. But he said, since you have kept the words of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation. Because you got people who works in the financial um, industry talking about the CBDC is going to go under the skin. So we at that time. The paper cash is about to be done away with. What are you going to do? All you people put your trust in the paper currency. All you people put your trust in money, period. But you gotta understand that the Lord said that he blessed the poor to be rich in faith. He blessed the poor to be rich in faith. Faith is what's gonna get you to overcome. Wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of thy times and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. Also in Ecclesiasticus 1 and 21, it said that the fear of the Lord drive of away sins. You can't do what you want to do. You can't just profess with your mouth that you believe in the Lord, but then live after the way that you want to live. So the Lord is going to kill all you hypocrites, all you false prophets, and all you Edomites out here who are two-time losers. It's a damn shaft. I don't feel sad for y'all. Edomites, every time I walk up and down downtown, I see them, hey, bro, you, you got some change? Damn shame. You think you think it's gonna be Israelites in the kingdom asking for change? You think it's gonna be Israelites in the kingdom at the bottom? Needing anything? So you two-time loser. That's why the scripture says the Egyptians is going to be against the Egyptians because that's Edomites versus Edomites, because the Edomites realize, wait a minute, I got the shitty end of the stick. I've been told my whole life that since I'm white, I got some type of privilege. Now you about to see. And the other thing that bothers me about Edomites too. They want to actually put themselves in our stead now. Now they want to act like they're oppressed now. Now they want to get act like they treated unfairly now. No, nah, stay on that side. All right? You're going to be destroyed for the devil that you are. And all you Edomites is going into captivity. And if you don't know what an Edomite is, that's a self-proclaimed white people since 1681. What was you calling yourself before that? All right? So, it said, they should not drink wine with a song Strong drink shall be to them that drink it. Now, if you're a drinker, whatever emotion that you are, before you drink, it's going to enhance that. So if, if it's even alcohol in this time, you're going to be sad. So when you drink it, all you're going to do is enhance that sadness. So it said, Walter, let's, let's say it again. They should not drink wine with a song. Strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. So now you're not drinking to be, uh, to rejoice, you're drinking it to get over your problems. But your problems never go away. See, right now, you can't drink, you can smoke, you can do all you want to do, and temporarily you get over your problems. But after that drunk and high go down, you realize you're still in the same position. 
But guess what? And ain't gonna be no other position. The only, only gonna be one position, that's you being oppressed. So when you drink, all the emotions gonna come out. Tears gonna start running down your face. You probably gonna try to drink yourself to death. There's gonna be a lot of alcohol poisoning in the days to come. All right, and actually, what ended up happening too, is that when the pandemic happened, new alcoholics and new drug addicts came on the scene. <clears throat> when they shut down the earth for those little times that uh, that they shut it down, when the COVID, when the CB19 first started, new alcoholics and new drug addicts came up. Uh, up. I know people who never drink and smoke, and they actually start drinking and smoking in that time. So how much more when that when when the worst time on earth is gonna come to pass? <clears throat> So it said the city of confusion. What's the word for confusion? Babal, which goes back to Babylon, all right? The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up that no man may come in. That's martial law. So what's gonna happen? Sedition among men. That's gonna cause the military troops to come in, which is called the UN peacekeepers, all right? Because the people gonna recognize, like, wait a minute, we gotta do something. We gotta stand. All right, all those military um, Edomites will be having a uh, holding up the American flag and talking about we got to fight. There's been a whole bunch of videos from 2020 into now of Edomites getting on the um, camera talking about, hey guys, we're going to have to fight. If they come to our house, arm up. So the scriptures is coming to pass. So that's why the men of the Lord rejoice. We got the eyes to see a prudent man perceive the evil and hide it himself. He hide himself in the word, in the faith of it, in the faith of it. All right. So it said, there is a crying, there is a crying for wine in the street. What is wine? Wine is something that makes you merry hearted. All right. You looking for a way to rejoice again. You looking for a way to be happy again. But it ain't gonna be no happiness. The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. It ain't no light at the end of the tunnel. All right. So there is a crime for wine in all the street. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. The mirth of the land is gone. Right now, you still got some mirth. The sown places are still sown. But what's gonna happen when you go into your store and that place is not sown no more, it's no food in it. All it takes is for it to not to be no food and everybody gonna turn up. The men of the Lord and the women who believe, they're going to depend on the Lord because the Lord said he's going to feed us. But what about you? You're going to take matters into your own hands. Scripture said for, for the pride and for great tribulation, all right, and the lack of bread, people shall be spoiling each other's house, all right? Your next door neighbor's going to get it. The person who you call your homeboy going to get it. Ain't no friends in that day. Uh, 2nd Ezra 6 and 27, it said friends shall fight each other like enemies. That's the world that we're coming into. So when we come out here, we prophesy what's about to happen before it happens. That's what prophecy means. I might make a little jokes here and there, I might laugh a little bit, but this ain't no damn game. If you do not trust in the Lord and do what he says, you're going to die. That's why the Lord says in Ezekiel 9 and 4, mark them who woe, I mean, mark them who sigh and cry for the abomination thereof. When you go into that word mark in the Hebrew, it's the wah, which means a mark of exemption, which means we're going to be covered. If you're not uh, sighing and crying for this abomination, you're not a man of the Lord. If you actually like this place a little bit, you're not a man of the Lord. The Lord said, if you, if you don't hate your mom, dad, father, brother, sister, <laughs> children, even your own life, you cannot be my disciple. If you understand what this world is all about and you understand what the Lord is going to give us in return for standing stiffly for the name of the Lord, the scripture says that use the world not as abusing it for the fashion of this world passing away. Everything that you see is going to be unsown. When you go into that word fashion, it talks about the manners of life. So the way that you know life is about to be turned upside down. All right? So then what? What are you going to do? I'm talking about you Israelites who got a couple dollars. What is you going to do when you go to the bank and there's no money in it? They talking about CD, CBDC. 
You have 50,000 in the bank and then you wake up and they talk about this cash is no longer currency. Usually those devils, they, they, they be right there and start playing. <laughs> See where they go today. So it says, the mirth of the land is gone in the city is left desolation and smitten the gate in the gate is smitten with destruction all right uh. the gate is the openings of the city all right and at that time it ain't gonna be no gate it ain't gonna be no just listen the border control already can't even keep the russians and chinese out there was a whole article on that china china already over here they ready to set up shop they ready to knock you israelites down yeah. That's why when you go to Psalms 83, the first two nations, I think it's Edom and Moab, or it's Edom, Ishmael, and Moab. All right? Those are our three greatest enemies. Yeah. So it says, when thus it shall be in the midst of the land, among the people, there shall be as a shaking of the olive tree and the gleaning grapes when the finish is done. See, that's why, like, the Lord going to kill our people. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to kill our people. He already dead. He going to be physically dead soon, though. All right? He might die tonight. The Lord don't play. He don't play. You know what I'm saying? So the point is this. So the Lord said that everybody's going to feel it. Let's read uh, verse 13 in NLT. Isaiah 24 and 13. Throughout the earth, the story is the same. Because remember... When the devil come down with great rap, it's already going down over there in Europe. France is bad right now, all right? France been rioting for a couple months now. They just haven't put it on the news. A lot of people dying. They let the zoo animals out, which remind me of a scripture. That scripture when it said that uh, there be spirits. I gotta get it now. <sighs> Maybe spirits created for vengeance? Yep. That one? Yep. They already had the zoo in Mattapan with all the gorillas and everything. Yeah. That zoo in Mattapan broke loose. Niggas was terrified, man. That shit happened a couple years back. Niggas was terrified, man. Worried about the gorillas and everything. But when the Lord actually puts the spirit on them to attack people, that shit's going to be different, man. Hell yeah. That's in the scriptures. Yeah. So it says... Shit. Ecclesiastes 39 and 28 It said There be spirits that are created for vengeance Which in their fury lay on sore strokes In a time of destruction They pour out their force And appease the wrath of him that made them So guess what The Lord put the spirit on men Animals <clears throat> To appease the Lord And guess what When they do it They feel great about it See here's the problem when the Lord take off that spirit from the man who have did the thing, see, when they was doing it, when they was killing that person or that woman or that child, the spirit came upon them to do it. But then when that spirit leave, then they feel sad. But in the midst of it, they don't feel sad. They got joy in doing it. All right? So it says, fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. And it says, Teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. So guess what? The animals is gonna get up in this. That's why you got zoos in cities all over Babylon the Great. They gonna get let loose. So hey, everything is coming to pass that the Lord said it would. So going back to Isaiah uh, 24 and 13, it said throughout the earth the story is the same. Only a remnant is left. That's the elect. Like the stray of olives left on the tree of the few grapes left on the vine after harvest. And the law is called cleaning. All right? We take how much we need and leave the rest of the poor. So the Lord is making a, a, a symbolic painting a picture for you. That's how it's going to be. The scripture said that it's going to... Matthew, I'm going to get that. That was in the law. Yep. That, yep, that was in the law. I'm gonna get second address that. It's gonna bring the point home even more. But before I get there, I'm gonna get Luke. Luke 21 and 25. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So guess what? You're gonna be seeing blood moon before the grateful day of the Lord. Yeah. 
you might see a, a full solar eclipse before the day of the Lord. Because it's saying that the moon and the sun are going to be darkened, but also the moon and the sun represent the wisdom and understanding. See, at that time, there ain't going to be no prophets prophesying telling you, hey, this is about to happen, you need to repent. The Lord said it's going to be a famine of the word. All right? And it says, upon the earth, the distress of nations. All right? Why? Because of the things that's going to be transpired on the earth. It's going to be a lot of non-justice. It's going to be famine. It's going to be great tribulation. So what's going to cause people is going to cause the survival of the fittest. All right? If, if a man is if a man stronger than another man, he's going to take his goods. That's the day that we're coming into. All right? Distress upon nations. And it says, the sea in the way is wrong. All right? Because guess what? The Lord said, because at, at the end of the day, the cherry on the top, as it said in Isaiah 24 and 21, it says that the earth should rock to and fro as a drunkard. That's what's going to cause the waves and the sea roaring. All right? Because it's going to be great tribulation, and then the missiles is going to be the cherry on top. All right? And it says, men's heart fell in them for, wait, and men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. All right? So you got to imagine in this time, it's going to be people getting shot down like a dog in the street. You're going to be seeing cannibalism. That's all in the scriptures. It's going to be a lack of bread. All you're going to be hearing is screaming and gunshots going off. So, yeah, people are going to be dying from heart attacks also. Loud noises. Right? You can't, you got to remember, in, in this time, your house is shy, your chariots is going to be seen. You've been believing that these aliens coming from another country because that's what they taught you. Yep. Not understanding that's the chari chariots of salvation. So you're going to be scared because of that. Also, it said fearful sight is in the, in, in the heavens, man. Like I said, i never seen a blood moon. And i never seen it so... i seen it on YouTube because I went to go YouTube, all right? But i never seen it in person. But I think the, the one that I really liked, though, was the... Um, the full solar eclipse. The sun looked like the new moon. It just have a, a aura around it, but it's straight black. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like something in the back of it? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, so these things we're going to see, man. We're going to see things we've never seen before. The movies that you watch for entertainment is about to come to reality. Yeah. <laughs> All right? So now... Second, second Ezra's. It's log, it's hard to see, man. This sun beaming on me. Yeah. So it says, for many of them that dwell upon, second Ezra 16 to 22. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. That's why when you go to um, Amos 5 and 18, it say he that uh, uh, escaped from a lion, a bear gonna meet him. Him that put his hand on a wall, a serpent yeah. gonna bite him. Yeah. So you gonna go into tribulation to tribulation. If, if whatever is meant for you in that day, that's what's gonna happen to you. Some of us are just slated to go into the famine. Some of us slated to go into captivity. Some of us are slated to go in getting destroyed by the sword. Some of us are slated to get destroyed by wild beasts. Yeah. So you gotta understand. Remember that show, uh, uh, what was it, uh, A Thousand Ways to Die? I think it's called A Thousand Ways to Die. Well, you're dealing with the Lord, it's a trillion ways to die. He created death. He know the ins and outs of death. He created pain. He can make you feel a pain that you never felt before. Huh? Right? So this is the power that you're dealing with. And the scriptures are called, he called the King of Terror. The King of Terror, man. I was shocked. Yeah. So it says, Verse 23, and the dead shall be cast out as dumb. What is dumb? Shit. All right? It's going to look like a whole bunch of droppings on the floor, but it's going to be bodies. All right? And it said, there should be no man to comfort him, which means there ain't going to be nobody getting buried in that day. All right? You ain't going to be making no money in that day. Um, what's the, the, oh, the funeral director. No. What, what is they call? Damn, what do people call? That be, uh, not the Paul Bear. I can't remember right now. Not the My mind is, Huh? Not the mortician. Yeah, the they, they ain't them either. Oh, no, man. Damn. But anyways. But yeah, so 
Ain't nobody gonna be getting buried in that day. These bodies is gonna be laying on the street. And it says, for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. Why? Because of your pride, man. Scripture says in 2nd Edges 8 and 50, for many great miseries shall happen to them in a the later time because they have walked a great time, a great pride. So you gotta understand that we are in the later time. The Lord is about to challenge your pride. Scripture said that the um, pride go before, before destruction. Yeah, that's the so that's the only thing that's coming to you. You got a lot of people just for you to just for you to not want to hear the word is prideful. Right, right, right. You got a lot of people. Like I said, if you if I was able to pan this camera around, yeah. people walk past me, talk shit. I know whoever watches this be seeing the people, I always catch them at the corner of my eye. They'll get past me and they'll do a little dance or flick me off or do something. You know what I'm saying? Then you got people who walk past me and do shit up there. You know what I'm saying? So guess what? The Lord just marking you. I don't even have to be a man of the Lord. When I'm speaking right now, because at the end of the day, I can fall out the truth. That's why this truth is scary. All right? I'm very humble when it comes to that. I do not act like I'm somebody. Everything that I'm reading can come upon me too. If I don't endure to the end, I'm gonna be in the same slate as the people that I'm warning. So don't get too proud, all right? We was all once in the world before. The Lord had mercy upon us. So you always gotta keep that in mind. But going back to the point, there's about to be dead bodies everywhere. And they sound like it could never happen in Babylon the Great. This is America. Well, uh, you don't know prophecy, my friend. All right? So now, second address, jump down to 27. Second address 16, 27. It says, so that a man shall desire to see another and to hear his voice. That's how much death it's gonna be. Like I said earlier, you got hundreds of thousands to a million people in a city. Guess what? There's only gonna be 10 left. That's what we're about to read next. Imagine that though. Boston, I think I got, I think it's like 300 and something thousand people in Boston. There's only gonna be 10 left, man. The Lord, he said the devil comes down with great wrath because he know we have but a short time. When a man knows that he got nothing coming to him but destruction, I'm gonna try to take as many people out as I can too. Shit, ain't like I'm about to be blessed in the kingdom. I gotta serve captivity and after a thousand years, I'm gonna be burnt and I'm gonna be done away with. So hell yeah, if I was the Edomite, killing all you Jakes, all right? Of course the yeah. Lord ain't gonna allow that to happen because you got the remnant. Yeah. But literally only the remnant is going to survive. That's what you don't understand. The 144,000 in the great multitude, that's the only people that's gonna be alive. Over here. Cause this is where the big destruction is coming from. Over here, all right? So you're gonna have people alive over there in Europe, over there in Asia. All right, because guess what? They're going into captivity. Everybody ain't going to die. All right? But everybody that's not part of the elect over here is going to die. Imagine that. This is the place where wickedness spread into the four corners of the earth. This is the head of the earth. You take out the head, the rest of the body falls. That's why the Lord is keeping this place for last. See, they turning up over there in, in Europe. China been under a dictatorship. This place... The Lord is saving for last. Why? Because this is the golden cup in the Lord's hand who made the earth drunk. But now the nations are mad. And they're going to shoot fire on this place. This place is going to be fireworks. All right? So now, 2nd Andrew 16, 28. It said, For of a city there should be ten left, two in the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and the cuts of the rocks. So people are going to be trying to hide themselves in caves. People are going to be trying to hide themselves in the woods. But guess what? You're gonna get you probably gonna meet a wild beast. Because yeah. that's what the scripture says. No matter which way you go, the Lord got it covered. The Lord got it covered, man. Check this battery. Oh, you good. Yeah. Right here, partner. Yep. Yeah. So going back, only got a few more. Yeah, they're gonna so, try to hide in the cliffs and the rocks, like you said. They're gonna try to hide in the different rocks and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Hey. And that's scripture too. The, the elite gonna do that. That's why they got something called what you know about the, the underground, underground cities. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, the, and the Lord said that we're gonna grab them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Hunt them. Yeah. So 
pulling like right Like I out. said, no matter which way you go, the Lord got the counter. Yahweh he is called the right hand in the scriptures. And guess what? That right hand coming right over top of the jab. You throw a hook, he going to duck it, he going to get hit with an uppercut. Yahweh is the right hand, he going to put you to sleep. Right, right. So Isaiah 24 and 18, it says, It shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. Going back to wherever you go, if you are meant to be destroyed, it's going to happen unto you. All right, the pit in this context is talking about the system, man. So you got the pit. Which, reckon, uh, which represent death. Yeah. Also, it represent the grave. Also, it can represent the system. We are in the pit right now. The Lord said he gonna deliver us out of the pit. This is captivity for us. For Rook 3 Nation, we are yet in this day in our captivity and we are subjected to payment. That should make you mad. The Lord said that the earth was made for our sakes. <coughs> you ain't supposed to be paying for nothing. You gotta pay for the water, all right? Right. You gotta yeah, pay for electricity, yeah. and that big ball up there in the sky, that's natural electricity. All right? So the thing is, is that you pay for things that the Lord gave to you as a heritage. That should make you mad. You should understand what status you're supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. But our people don't care. Our people being inferior to, inferior orderized. I just made that word up. Inferior orderized. <laughs> I can't even say it. I can't even say it. <laughs> but anyways. Cool. <laughs> but basically, Esau, he did his thing with you. He made you feel inferior to him. He made you feel like you're just a black person, just a Latino person, just a Native American person. All right? So going to the, uh, the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, he gave you crumbs, and the scripture said, surely oppression makes a wise man mad, but the gift is up the heart. So those crumbs that you receive, oh, you got rock right back to sleep. Every time that you feel like... Jake is about to rouse up and get them niggas a food stamp. They'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? They get rocked right back to sleep. All right? So that's our people in the nutshell. And then they'll put Jesse Jackson and Al Sharp Tongue in front of you. Oh, and another thing, what they really did was really rock y'all Jake to sleep. They put Barack Obama in front of you. All right? It's like, yeah, we got him now. We're going to put a ham mic. All right? Not the Israelite. They're going to put a ham mic in front of you. Our people don't know no better. They just see a so-called black man. And they were like, yeah, but I'm guilty of that. But that was in 2008. I was uh, 20 years old. I ain't know nothing about the truth. That was the first time I ever voted in 2008. Because I thought <laughs> we finally had a black man. We about to, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. then I ended up getting the truth in his second term in 2014. All right. Back and then I realized like, wow, imagine <laughs> this. This damn devil under his watch Jake was getting mowed down by the police. Uh, like every uh, other day. Uh, Trayvon uh, uh, Martin happened, Eric yeah, Garner yeah, yeah. happened. Yeah, all of that. Uh, That's what it began. Uh, Tamir Rice happened. <laughs> that bullshit. Like, uh, uh, Mike Brown happened. You know what I'm saying? All this happened under Obama's watch. Which shows you that he ain't give a damn about you. He ain't do nothing. It actually got worse since he came in. He the one that legalized the rainbow people to get married. So yeah, but back to the scriptures. So it says, Take in the snare for the windows from on high are open. What is the windows from on high? That's the firmament. The scripture said my, my sword shall be bathed in heaven. So the missiles is going to go into the firmament yeah. and come down upon the earth. All right? And it said, and the foundations of the earth do shake. Because that's what's going to happen when it hits. And it said, the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth moves exceedingly. The earth reeled to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed as a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And it said, and it shall come to pass. This is the point. Because after all this happened, you're going into captivity. All you nations, but Esau, Edom, they're going to be the face of captivity. And it said, and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners gather in a pit. That's us grabbing you from the rocks. You elites, as it said in Psalms 149, gather, uh, gather their kings and nobles. I don't want to get it. I got to quote it. I might have to get it. Yeah, gather their kings 
with Fetters Fetters of Iron. Iron. Yeah. All right? Sure. That's, it. That's in Psalms 149. Sure. All right? So it says, And they shall be gathered together as prisoners, or gathered in the pit, and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days they shall be visited. And that visitation is going to be you over dial 118. Yeah. I know with that. So you're going to be done away with after the thousand years. Got them in bundles. Got them in bundles. Yep. Away, man. So, hopefully, you know, hopefully it was edifying. It is hot. I should have, I should have went down there where there ain't no sun at. Under the bellow. Under yeah. The I was going to do that, but I was like, I, I, I probably, looked over I, there. I was like, hey. See, I, see, I actually there. came over here because I thought you weren't going to find me like the last time. Nah, I'm gonna look, nah, bro. I'm looking this around. I'm looking for sure. Yep. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Around, so. Bro. First up, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom to the elect, and a Ba'a Pupa, Kwame Asherala, Shalom. Yeah, man. 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 Y